I continue to watch people make bad choices with their lives. Destiny damaging choices, even Christians. And yet they are surprised why certain outcomes continue to recycle. Do you know there are people today, in all honesty, this year was like last year. Regardless what prophetic word came, because no prophetic word will veto your ability to choose. Prophetic words are announced so that you will know what God wants to do. Then align your decisions and your choices. Are we together? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass. It's in your Bible. If thou shalt hearken. Why would God be explaining it to men? I thought he's all powerful. If you want to bless, bless God. If you want to curse, curse God. If you want to move it, Israel out of Egypt, move them. You are almighty. Why does God seem helpless when he's talking with men? Because he gave man one ability that makes man like him. The power to choose. Jesus had the power to say, God, plans have changed. I will not die for any man. These people are crazy. They are coming to die for them and they are not grateful. And God would have respected his choice. I hope you know that. The Bible says he was tempted in every way. Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. He said, I have the power to call a legion of angels. Many of us right now, the Lord gave me this message to the body of Christ. The decisions that you are making, you can pray and make wrong choices. Your wrong choices will veto your prayer. If God wants to help you, he will send you mercy. Another person will come and influence your mind. Can I tell you, your choices will influence you more than your prayer life. Hear what I'm teaching you. Your choices will influence the outcome of your life and destiny more than your prayer life. It is the reason why there is a lot of prayer with all due respect that happens in the body of Christ. And yet you do not see people making constructive destiny advancement. Because many believers just pray as a ritual. But they do not purify their decisions to make word compliant pro-destiny decisions. There are people till the next 10 years they will still be poor because of their decisions. There are people till the next 10 years they will never build a house. With all due respect, there are pastors and leaders for the next 10 years they will never rise. And don't say it does not matter. There are individuals whose lives will never make any notable kingdom impact because of decisions. Decisions. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. You've heard me say it here in Koinonia. If you come from a poor family, don't let a poor family come out of you. If you come from a family of witchcraft, don't let witchcraft come out of you. If you were raised with all due respect by irresponsible parents, don't waste the time arguing and hating them. And then you wake up and see children all around you and they call you daddy. You are almost tempted to say you are not my children. But time has gone. Many of you right now, you are wasting time in anger. You are wasting time in bitterness. Anger and bitterness does not lead you to your desired heaven. The day you settle down and choose. Apostle, I was raped when I was small. I sympathize with you. I don't downplay your pain. But if you stay there complaining, you will get to 40 years, 50 years and not make any quality decision. Apostle, I, I hate my parents because when other people were going to school, they were there around, dancing around masquerades. And the result now is all of us are poor. What are you doing about it? They have run their own course. Can I tell you, in my world, I have taught you koinonia. In my world, an adult is not 18 years. I respect that statistics, but it's a deception to many people. There are many, many adults calling themselves children. In my world, the moment you can decide 
and you have an awareness of the consequences, you become an adult immediately. How soon? Immediately. Let's stop pampering people to produce destructive destinies. You see someone 35 years, 40 years, and he says, I'm a last one. What does that mean? <laughs> of course, I'm not being sarcastic. Yes, thank God that you're so... Destiny does not care, ladies and gentlemen. The one who decides, if it be thou, bid me come. He said, come. The one who chose to walk out on water was the one who experienced that miracle. Hallelujah. Our world is full of commentators who never make choices and decide. They comment about those making strategic impact and they cannot jump out of that water. Our business people, I'm ashamed of them. Something as easy as this and they will never do it. Preachers who are talking like ah, that scripture is not really correct and yet they will never do anything impactful. The world does not reward commentators. It is those who get up and, and do something with their lives. Are we together? There are many people who insulted fathers, insulted mothers, parents now. Now is their turn. Their children are suffering worse conditions now. If your father and your mother with all due respect lived a mediocre life, the first way out is to find another father and mother who reflects what you want to become. I told you that the principles of followership is twofold. Number one, follow them. Number two, looking on to Jesus. This is how we become in the kingdom. Follow them is the first principle of followership. There are some them that represent where you are going. Do you know why God creates, puts leaders in front of you? Those leaders are an attempt to model your future. That where you want to go to. So leaders are a personification of outcomes. A personification of decisions. So that you can see the outcome in the life of others. Seeing somebody fail and then you go and fail again. You are the one who is twice as unwise. Because they already failed for you. The beauty of leadership is an opportunity to see the scars of people. They will show you their scars that I made this decision. And this is the consequence. Now I am teaching you to save you the 20 years I wasted in my own life, a leader will say. And yet many people will not respect it. I have taught you here in Koinonia that do not only respect crowns, respect scars. Because both crowns and scars are teachers. Any man you see wearing a crown, look very well. Beyond the regalia, look at his hands, you will see a scar. A scar, a testament of wrong decisions, a testament of endurance, sometimes a testament of right decisions. Is someone learning? Ask, bring sample 10 young believers. Someone who would tell you, I'm going to be a great man of God and ask him, what are you doing now? It will tell you, well, uh, once in a while I listen to some messages if I have the time to. And then I just know what I'm focused on writing what God told me. My dear minister in the making, you will never arrive there by that behavior. No. No. There are many like you who wished ministry. Unfortunately, it does not happen by wishing. The Bible says, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Walk it out. Hallelujah. There are many gentlemen right now. They cannot tell me the last time they read a book. A quality pro-destiny book. Many gentlemen cannot tell the last time they opened themselves to receive quality strategic mentorship. Receiving mentorship at your terms is a joke. You will never amount to anything. It's like a teacher, a student telling the teacher, I'm not ready to learn now. Just be patient. Allow me rest. When I'm ready, I will call you. Teacher says, nonsense. <laughs> are we together? How many people are poor and broke today, but will never respect the wisdom that comes from people who have been helped by God? No. Hallelujah. You want to become a great mother. 
and you see a woman who is exceptional with her home and her children and you disrespect them do you know every time i see great people i look past their result i want to buy into their mindset because their results are consequences did you hear that their results are consequences there are decisions that led there and i want to hear it what is your understanding like what are your decision making processes like man of god what decisions have you made that brought such power such grace such influence to your life let me sing that song again for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord now let me tell you this I came from an evangelical background and being that my whole training and my exposure in ministry was from the northern middle belt and context you know we got that foundation of character moral excellence but there were certain things about administrative excellence that I did not have the opportunity to see because of the background as God began to expose me to a global audience I knew that there were some things I did not get by the advantage of my background and that I will have to reinvent myself and so back to the formula of followership follow them looking on to Jesus there are things that them cannot teach you because the them to are students it's just that they have gone ahead are we together and I began to learn administrative principles these are things that you do not get just by impartation. No, you get by knowledge. Serious, constructive, definite knowledge. And I started getting the materials, opening up myself to the various trainings in addition to being a man of God to become an effective leader. Leader of resources, leader of people. You see that now? You want God to trust you to manage his resources and all you have is a sincere heart that is good but that is not enough no the dynamics of managing resources resources there being both human and material resources this one is a learned skill it comes by training it's not just a gift hallelujah there are many believers who are trusting God for increase and promotion you want to pastor hundred members there is a skill to pastor hundred members you want to pastor a thousand members with the mentality of the one who pastors a hundred members? No. God loves his sheep too much. He will not trust you with that kind of thing. There is something you need to know. The dynamics of conflict resolution. The dynamics of people management. There are several things you need to learn at an elevated state. In addition to prayer, fasting, and the ministry of the word. Decisions. What is the difference between someone who is running a big shopping mall and another person who is struggling with a small shop? It's not just exposure, it's their decisions. The person small there is either starting small or he has refused to grow. Refusal to grow is a decision and God and life can respect it. But the consequences that come with stuntedness will also meet you there. Without growth, there is no fruitfulness fruitfulness is a direct product of growth if you see a baby that is pregnant would you run away is that normal come on talk to me adults is that normal no no matter what genetic explanation they give in africa we'll call that person a witch wherever you came from you are older than this body you are entering and you will talk to the spirit and say you can't be that young and maybe in some places they may even completely throw away that that because fruitfulness is a product of growth if you go and plant mango seed and by the next day you see a tiny branch and you see mangoes bigger than it you will not eat that mango because we were trained to respect fruitfulness when we find growth are we together now so most people brag about being fruitful but they do not want to grow if you do not grow you cannot be fruitful be fruitful in ministry be fruitful in business be fruitful in destiny it is a product of growth please say growth and i have taught you that success is not what you seek success is what you attract by who you are becoming 
your growth is how success is attracted to you are we together the moment you transit into superior versions of you you begin to attract a certain kind of people a certain kind of resources a certain kind of influence these are irrefutable spiritual laws luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased i like that scripture and jesus increased even though the word of God, even though the fountain of wisdom, he subjected himself to this law, he increased. What does that mean? Another measure of that increase came to him in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Once upon a time, I would never be able to say the whole globe should listen to me. Once upon a time, I was still alive, yet you will not come to hear me. Once upon a time, I was even anointed, yet you will not come to hear me. What happened? Growth. Growth. Once upon a time, it would be foolishness and a demonic attack for me to want to go to another nation and organize a conference. Where will the money come from? And if the money comes, where will the people come from? And if the people come, the level of grace to defend that call. Say growth. This is very powerful. There are many people praying for realms that they are not willing to grow into and it will never come. Pastors are praying sincerely, Lord, give me a global vision. And they think all there is is anointing and one sermon. Ministry preaching only accounts for about 30% of ministry. There are many other unseen aspects of ministry. You can preach well and fail as if God did not call you. Breathe, Lord. Breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up and so That is why even in the spirit there is something called spiritual growth. Are we together now? There are things I can do now in the spirit I would not have been able to do 10, 20 years ago. Not because it's not the same life I have, but exploring the riches of that life and walking in dexterity, the power, the grace, the wisdom. Are we together? And there are many young people because of this arrogance of our generation, believing I can do all things in Christ. They have dared certain things that are beyond the scope of their growth and beyond the level of the spiritual power that they carry. And they have casualties to tell for it. You see, with all due respect, you see this simple thing here? Coming to have all the fathers in a land and then you are making declarations and speaking over spirits? Let me tell you, you better know where you stand before you take a risk like this. There are people, you do this kind of thing before the service is your dead body they will carry out. As simple as it sounds. Because in making declarations, you are talking to spirits who are hearing you. <laughs> It sounds very easy, but there are idols in your own village. You go and try it. Just go and gather the people and say, I come. I've read in my Bible, you shall take up serpents. Where is the, the those in charge of the shrine? I'm not scaring you. Forget it. If you don't grow, there are things you will see in the Bible, but on trying it, you've watched wrestling. That's what we call wrestling. Wrestling. That people jump and fly and you know fall down on one another and twist one another throw them up as if they are playing they give disclaimers and say you are watching for entertainment make sure parents watch your children make sure they do not try it by the time you see your little child tie something on his neck because he wants to be superman and then he climbs the dining table and jumps up and falls does that mean that realm cannot be attained it can be attained by men, but not a man as small as that boy. There is something that boy can do and build muscles and stamina. Are we together? One day, the same person who was crying 
will now jump up and fall down. That's how it is spiritually. There is a level of capacity you must carry, recognized by heaven and hell, to be able to do certain things. There are people today who have spoken over people. I rebuke that 125 year course upon your life. And by the next day, they get into dementia. They start forgetting everything. And you are asking, Pastor, what happened? They, they, they threaded a territory that their growth could not afford. If growth was not necessary, God will not appoint men to follow men, nor men to ordain men. Are we together now? Is someone listening now? Yes. We are talking decisions, but it's important for you to listen. Growth. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. There are people who have refused to grow. I'm going to say this because I want to round up by recapping something I've taught you. But the Lord put it in my spirit to challenge many people. Last year will look like this year. This year will look like next year. Regardless the prophetic word that comes, your 10 years will look like yesterday or even worse than yesterday if you do not understand the power of choices and decisions. There are nations that when I travel to, you will see something you once saw, but when you get there, you almost cannot know the place again because they have decided to improve and develop the place. There are places you wear as a child, even with your eyes closed, you can locate it. As a child, you were the one who hits the wall and that part in the wall you hit is still like that today, now that you are an adult, because nobody could fix whatever happened there. It's not good. Nations can decide to remain stagnated. Individuals can decide to remain stagnated. Families can decide to be a center of reproach and shame. Men can decide that I will not rise. I will remain small. I pray for you. Whatever has kept you down, my dear people, in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I'm praying that in this service, you will begin to make constructive choices. Yeah. Prostitution is a choice. Arm robbery is a choice. Laziness is a choice. Prayerlessness is a choice. Wordlessness is a choice. Refusing to come to church is a choice. Having bad friends is a choice. Having good friends is a choice. Being a failure is a choice. It's just a choice whose dynamics you did not understand, but it's a choice. Being poor is a choice. Being a mediocre is a choice. Living without help is a choice. Not enjoying the ministry of men is a choice. Failing in whatever you do is a choice. Becoming a child of God is a choice. As powerful as the Holy Spirit is, there are people here now who are not born again. In all the overflows who are not born again. The thousands following across the globe who are not born again. He will be around you, but he will respect you. Waiting for the moment you declare the logic of Jesus by yourself. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you the truth. When God taught me this, I made up my mind. And I started making certain quality choices with my life. I want you to listen now. Fasten your seatbelt because we are going to rush very, very fast. I began to make certain choices with my life. And the Lord gave me an assurance that if I insisted on making and staying on those choices, that I will become a certain kind of believer. And we are not yet there in the fullness but we are determined to keep making those choices. Are we together? Yeah. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till I look just like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till I look just like him. I remember many years ago, I would see, I would watch Reinhard Bonke crusades 
and watch people rise up from wheelchairs watch people throw crutches you know I didn't know the idea of being real or fake then those things were not in my mind but I was watching my God how can a man have this kind of power he was not with all due respect to him he's joined the cloud of witnesses he was not such an orator no he would not share some deep revelation from Greek and Hebrew no he would just stand and speak and fire that you can feel in your physical body I said what did this man touch what kind of grace is this how about um, T.L. Osborne he was a sound teacher of the word so he will teach and then you will see mighty miracles how about Billy Graham Billy Graham would teach like he's doing a discussion like a lecture you will almost feel sorry for him and think nobody will be convicted until he makes the altar call you see people coming and see they are dragging a chain someone coming you know that this is the holy ghost pushing this man because the way the man's face is you know that that man should not be in front and yet he's coming out but today as preachers we will shout and shout and shout and even beg people even kneeling down okay can you come to jesus then we stand up we raise a song again we say i know there's one more person come on don't be ashamed and and there are many sinners watching even the people by their left and right know from the time service started they have exhibited characteristic of sinners the neighbors know the person should be in front and yet the person will not come out hallelujah because one person chose that as a simple stammerer that he would believe in God and he trusted God for the fire to fall and he made a choice his choice was simple God gave me a mandate that Africa shall be saved and with that this man went through all the disciplines by choice that produces an evangelist indeed T.L. Osborne went to India he read his Bible oh, and went to India and when he went to India he was praying and asked people okay you know all of this he finished preaching and the people were just watching him at the end of it he prayed no salvation no miracles he left as if they drove him away he returned back to America and said God something must be wrong this is not what I see in the Bible and the Lord told him that ministry happens with a demonstration of power you do not call a people from one side of a belief system to another without a demonstration of power he said oh that's it he settled down and got genuine spiritual power he went back to India when he preached they were still looking at him like that and he said one blind person should come out one person on a wheelchair or I think on a crutch come out another person and in their presence those people got healed the place erupted erupted and without wasting energy he called people to Jesus that's how it works maybe God is talking to someone if you go and do a crusade like that they will beat you on that ground <laughs> don't embarrass the name of the Lord stay tarry until ye be endued with power say power, power. if this thing has not landed on your head tarry oh tarry it's, it's not every region that will just report you to go and read the Bible even those that had power they flog them talk more of those that do not have it I mean you have your Bible to read say power many of us downplay the power to choose I know I'm digressing but I am telling you there are certain equippings if you do not carry don't move to certain terrains don't go and call the nation in Nigeria nobody will sue you to court if they are not healed there are regions you gather people say the sick the lame the blind you have all kinds of problems come the people are coming their lawyers are there coming too and by the time you are done playing games just when you think you are preparing to return back you'll find out that you are in the prison hallelujah choices have you chosen to love God or are you just loving God have you chosen let me tell you something about choices the fact that choices become deliberate it gives you the staying power to maintain and defend your decisions 
the moment you do not make a deliberate decision listen to me the energy to remain until you reap the consequences the outcome of that decision is not in you that means if I choose today that in the name of Jesus Christ I am going to become a great person for instance do you know the fact that you made that decision the way God designed it is the energy to stay there even when you are in the pit and Daniel purposed in his heart give it to us Daniel 1 verse 8 Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat it doesn't mean he was not hungry decisions are powerful the staying power the power to endure comes from making conscious decisions the day you make up your mind that I'm on a journey to get spiritual power the pain of fasting will no longer affect you believe me every time you feel weary the the fact that you have decided the fact that you have decided that is why before we fast here we announce to people that we are going to fast and this is what is for do you know why because if you just join carelessly by 10 you almost feel like you are sick because the staying power is not there let me tell you why many people cannot push until their destiny emerges they have not decided you want to be rich but you have not decided I'm not talking of a hustler you have not decided you have not seen the need the day you settle down and say Lord this is my Bible I choose that from this day forward my children will not beg for bread again can I tell you even if you are saying that in a one room the entire energy of heaven that needs to support your growth many people have not chosen to stop what they are doing men the, there are people without prayer they told themselves I will not smoke again I'm telling you without a preacher it was a decision they made and the day they made that decision either because they told them you have um, what's this thing that you get when you smoke liver huh? lung cancer they tell them mr man the day you touch one uh, this thing again that day you are going to die out of that fear will come a decision no prayer no fasting they just decided from today that's the end of it can I tell you the truth by the privilege of God's grace and without any sense of you of pride there are things in my life today it's not just a free gift it's a product of a choice the moment you choose the power to take your eyes away from many other variables leaves immediately are we together Apostle, I want to pray, but do you know, I pray, there is a grace that comes so, but that grace respects your choice. You don't have the power to change yourself, but you can choose and agree with God that I want to be changed. Hallelujah. I remember very clearly when I made up my mind, I said, Lord, I have searched scripture and I have found out that if I am poor and I don't have the financial wherewithal, I may not do ministry with integrity and I may not be able to help people. Therefore, consciously, I've listened to message, not a money monger, not just some prosperity jargon, consciously, because I want to serve Jesus correctly, I want to live a life of integrity in ministry and to be a blessing. I made that vow today that me and poverty to be forever. The day I made that decision, there was no one naira in my pocket, but it was signed in heaven. Can I tell you? I don't mean to offend you truly many of you are not yet serious enough the realm of the spirit does not take you serious enough that's why some things have not changed did you hear what I said pastor you are not ready to grow that's why you are still giving flimsy excuses It's because another church is near me It's because this one is happening It's because I'm not an indigenous in Abuja it's a lie the day you make up your mind and say there is a way out father the same Lord is rich unto all there are fathers today with all due respect they are still giving flimsy excuses they've not paid us our arrears for five years that's why i've not risen it is a lie 
the day you get angry and say lord you are the one who made me a father over four children you cannot give me four children to turn my daughters and my sons into armed robbers and prostitutes from this day i made up my mind that my child will never lack school fees again you will see that the resources of heaven will rush towards you to support it it is a principle that both spirituality and psychology agree on that the moment you make a decision how to make that decision come to pass is released to you immediately the most important thing is to make the decision can i tell you there are many things i've decided in my life and in ministry at the point that decision was made the strategy was not even there but make the decision first for instance i will serve the lord all the days of my life what will i do now with the covenants of witchcraft don't worry you decide first in the name of Jesus, I will not take last in class again. Yeah, but I'm like that. I'm not really very sharp in my mind. You are not serious. You are not serious. No, you are not serious. I'm not very bright. No, you are not serious. I know that I'm, I'm a barrister, but I'm not practicing. You know, nobody wants to even, you are not serious. I'm sorry. Don't feel bad, but just believe me. You are not serious. Apostle, people come, they come and receive miracles and they leave me. You are both lying and you are not serious. Nobody leaves what works. Something about what you are saying is not true. You think you are blessing them. They are not getting blessed. Is someone getting angry? Let me speak to the gentleman for one minute. I want you to vow a vow. You know, I, when I talk to you like this, I talk to you in love. There are some things you must choose to never let happen in your life. One, that I will love the Lord with all my heart. I'm, I'm going to run through those things for you. Number two, I will be a responsible person as a leader and as a father. No gentleman in Koinonia should raise irresponsible children. You cannot pay their school fees, transferring the responsibility to your wife and saying, after all, the Bible says two have become one. It means you have been wasting my energy here with all the preaching that I've been preaching. Honestly. Apostle, you are only saying this because somebody will give you a seed after Koinonia. Where were they when we started? Decisions. You can make up your mind from today and say in the name of Jesus, by the next two years, there are certain things that should happen in my life. Do you believe that? You can make up your mind and say, every day from today, I will not sleep if I've not prayed for at least one hour. Decisions. Every day, I must read these one or two chapters. You will default some days, but let the decision be there to guide you. I make up my mind from today, this and that and that friends. You see, the power to choose is an ability that God himself respects. As for me, I've chosen. I used to tell them those days in Zaria that the future of this ministry is in that word, I, across the nations of the earth. And today, by his grace, he has brought great glory to himself and he's still bringing glory to himself. It is not a mistake. I am only grateful to see that some of the choices we made today are now being manifest in our lives. I made up my mind that I will never be a man of God who will go and preach somewhere and waste the time of God's people and as soon as they share the grace, I'll just say this man, no, no, no. So that the choice, whatever needs to be done as a sacrifice to prepare you, is it praying? Is it fasting? Is it building your capacity? Choices is not just a mere wish. It's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price. That price factor if you throw it away, you are not choosing. Hallelujah. I remember when I saw a few ministers of the gospel, especially watching their videos, I saw the kind of power that flowed through their life. I made a vow that I will never be a powerless man of God. I researched the subject of power with my passion and with my spirit. Let me tell you with every sense of humility, there are few books about power written by serious people that I've not read. This ministry of power, 
I follow the thing with grace. And every devil in hell, there are things that when it rests upon you, every devil in hell will know that there are things you have found. Are we together? I made up my mind that nobody will sit under an atmosphere like this that you are listening to me and all I will give you is just a lecture except your faith is not willing to receive. No. When you sit down, it's like you are connecting electricity from front to the back and something from the words. Your spirit, you know, you are receiving that impact. It's beyond an information. This is why you, you will think you are not understanding but it's entering your spirit. I will ask you this question one year later. You will still quote it because it entered your spirit. It's beyond the lecture. This one comes with power. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. I found out that the secret to effective ministry, in addition to godliness, in addition to integrity, is to truly carry genuine power that solves the problems of people. It doesn't matter how sincere you are. If that power comes, you can do acted power, stage managed power, or assume power. You can assume you are powerful. When you see me stand and I say things like, oh, there are three people here. I hope you know that those things are not acting. I respect God, but I respect myself too. Are we together now? I will not come and embarrass myself in the presence of people and just, you know the risk it takes, you try it. It's not dull babies that are flying up and down. It's human beings who came to church, respected themselves. My own is to train my discernment that as it's coming from heaven, once it lands, it's like, it's, like, it's like a receptor that is so sharp. As soon as it arrives, I'm ready to declare it.